So it looks like industry-specific LLMs are about to replace industry clouds. Let's talk about it. So welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, your source of understanding how to make AI work for your enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Lenthicum, author, speaker, b geek, and analyst with the Cube Research. Let's get started. So the question of how uh, industry clouds will fare with the rise of industry-specific large language models, or LLMs, uh, is something that I'm getting questions about these days, and it's something that's it's kind of an interesting evolution of the market. You have to remember that We've been building industry-specific features into our cloud products, whether it's software as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service, probably for the last 10, 12 years. We've always known that verticalized capabilities are going to get us further down the line with a cloud service, and therefore the public cloud providers are motivated to build these things because it's going to sell more cloud. And to a large extent, they've been executing a bit on that. Hasn't lived up to, I think, what the uh, hype and expectations were so far, but now we're facing kind of a shift. The fact of the matter is, is that large language models with industry-specific capabilities are starting to emerge, and they seem to have a lot of overlapping uh, functions with industry clouds, and certainly there's a reason why they would replace them. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this show. So industry clouds um, are comprehensive end-to-end -end services by integrating a suite of applications tailored to a specific industry. And they're designed to address challenges like compliance, data security, operational efficiency. And what they do is provide specific domain, industry-specific functionality into sets of services that uh, companies are able to leverage. For example, finance, you know, retail, healthcare, have specific things that they always do. And your ability to create these services, they're gonna be of value within those particular industries is really what industry specific clouds are all to do, industry clouds. So they streamline workflow and enhance collaboration, and they do so in a centralized platform. And over the last 10 years, in many cases, the large cloud providers have been collaborating with big consulting firms and big companies to get these industry specific capabilities into these public cloud services, and they're using it as a way to enable more cloud sales. In other words, if you, you're able to buy something that's going to be other people's work where you don't have to replicate it or reproduce things that are industry specific, they're giving them to you, then you're going to be able to get down the road further. Industry specific LLMs are AI models, generative AI models, and they're trained on uh, uh, specialized data sets. And very much like industry clouds, they understand industry specific languages and contexts, and they understand processes. In essence, they're another way of providing knowledge services, industry-specific knowledge services, but they're doing so in a different way. This comes out of a knowledge model, and you're able to leverage the knowledge model through inference. You're able to train it and continuously improve it with new training data that's going into these industry-specific industry LLMs. So the advantage would be you know, static versus dynamic, where the industry clouds are going to be more static and that if we need to change or improve them, we're going to have to rebuild them, redeploy them. Obviously, they're, they're delivered as a service, so you're not going to get a CD in the mail and have to load it in your computer. Uh, however, they're not going to be as dynamic and continuously improving as the LLM's model because it's artificial intelligence systems. In other words, they're able to look at data in some cases, real-time data, industry, in data that's coming out of the industry, coming out of a particular business, and understand how to make decisions in the context of that changing knowledge. And that's going to provide you with a huge advantage over more static services where we're just leveraging, in essence, an application. So again, industry-specific LLMs are AI models that are trained on a specific domain data set. And so they focus on an area of the market. And normally it's one industry specific uh, LLM that's focused on a particular vertical, healthcare, retail, things like that. And we'll, I'll give you an example uh, in a minute. So, and they're capable of understanding the jargon context nuances of a that are of a particular industry. And they're able to deliver precision by having natural language processing kinds of tasks, the ability for people to leverage a prompt, the ability to do complex decision-making through a AI engine. So we're all used to using ChatGPT. We can ask it any number of things and it's able to generate uh, responses in a number of formats. It's able to you know, sing a song about something. It's able to generate a PDF file. Uh, it's able to generate uh, code 
uh, to program a system or program a uh, program a uh, web server. Uh, so it has a huge amount of flexibility and capability that are built within the system. Now imagine that delivered as an industry specific service. So in other words, the deep industry knowledge is within these knowledge models as well, well beyond what they normally get in a chat GPT, or it's just leveraging the holistic knowledge of the internet as a way to build these LLMs. So this is going to be set to a specific industry, understanding deeply what the what that industry means. For example, healthcare, understanding what the health codes are, what the treatment codes are, what di diagnostic uh, uh, information needs to be put, put in and process, the ability to look for things like uh, uh, you know, pharmaceutical issues, you know, all these sorts of things that are going to be a deep understanding around a particular industry that we try to do with industry clouds. The LLMs are typically going to be better at it because they're able to obtain and improve themselves ongoing. So even though an LLM may just have a base set of industry-specific information, when it's released, its ability to continuously learn as it goes and to even learn from its own experiences as it's working with different companies in, in that particular industry, it gets smarter and smarter. And that's the benefit of using that. So in other words, it's continuously improving. We don't typically have to make changes to it where it's not new releases of software uh, like we do with industry clouds, but the ability to build a framework that's going to be a framework of understanding that's going to be a framework of constantly improving how we're going to use these features. And that's the value of it in a nutshell. Okay, I hear you asking. So what's it, what are examples of industry-specific LLMs? Well, there's a few of them. We have MedPalm, uh, capital P, small a, uh, capital L, M, too. I love the way these things are named. Developed by Google, this LLM is trained on medical uh, data sets to assist with medical queries, diagnostics, and patient care decisions. And you also notice that the same people who are, are building and promoting industry clouds are also the ones who are building industry-specific LLMs. So the cloud providers, the big ones out there are all over this. This isn't something that's going to catch them by surprise. They're already investing in this area. We have a sector chart focused on radiology. These are all healthcare. These two are healthcare, by the way. It is used to help with the with interpreting medical images and providing instant radiological consultations. Very handy if you're uh, running a radiology practice. Uh, finance, the industry specific LLMs there would be Bloomberg GPT, a model designed to process and analyze financial data, offering insights and predictions in financial markets, help you fix stocks, look at where the markets are going, make better financial decisions. And in the legal vertical, we have uh, Chat Law, which is an open source model specifically trained with data sets in the Chinese legal domain, assisting with legal documents, analysis, and case law interpretation. That's a that's a very narrow vertical. So not just looking at the particular uh, Chinese legal domain uh, specifically, but we're going to see a build out in a lot of these areas where some companies um, themselves, such as a you know law firm, may go into business and start building industry specific LLMs for their law practices. They're able to sell to other law practices. Same with finance, big banks working on this, the ability to create the ultimate knowledge model that's able to be leveraged um, um, any number of times to by other banks. Uh, basically built on its base knowledge. And again, we're able to learn from the processing of other customers of these industry-specific LLMs and you know build them up into much more smarter, much more valuable knowledge engines. And same with healthcare. You know, but retail, um, manufacturing, all these things have certainly the need for industry-specific LLMs. And there's a lot of investment going on in the back right now, funded by uh, private venture, which are building these things out. And it's a perfect application for large language models. I mean, we talked on this show a lot of times that in many instances, building an LLM for your business is not necessarily a smart thing to do. They're gonna be huge. They take a lot of money to train. And most businesses won't find a use case for that. You know, However, small language models, agentic-based deployments, they certainly will. Well, LLMs, typically looking at the holistic view of a larger domain, for example, ChatGPT, the all everything that's out on the internet, um, focused on a particular vertical, are going to be something that's going to have value within that particular vertical, and certainly more value than some of the industry-specific applications and ERP systems and software as a service systems. Uh, 
even some of the uh, uh, microservices uh, that are industry specific uh, now. So those things are typically going to be static. They're going to be typically difficult and timely to to improve over time. And so once you define the value, once you define the processes, those things are very difficult to change. So you can change them. You certainly can change the code and change the processing, change the workflow, but you know, not as easy and not as adaptable and not as dynamic as a generative AI system. And obviously that's why we're investing in generative AI these days. So this is kind of the perfect application for a large language model. So ultimately that's where the value is going to be found. So in looking at the advantages of industry specific LLMs over industry clouds, we have a couple of things that are um, first and foremost and, and, and obvious to me, and I think should be obvious to you as well, enhanced precision and customization. LLMs are tailored in to industry, industry specific languages and contexts, providing more precise and relevant outputs and specialized tasks. So they're able to adapt to the way in which uh, industries talk, the particular semantics, the lingos, of those areas, how to communicate with human beings and communicate with systems uh, using natural language processing and APIs and do that effectively. Advanced data processing as processing LLMs can uh, effectively analyze and interpret large volumes of complex data, and they're able to offer insights that might be more difficult to extract within a traditional cloud solution, such as an industry cloud. Real-time decision-making. Uh, with their ability to process data quickly, LLMs can facilitate faster more informed decision-making processes essential for dynamic industries. So in other words, they're able to take processes, they understand how those things work, and they're able to respond to certain questions and do so in a real-time way, and the ability to act upon almost perfect data. So in other words, they see all aspects of the business, they see all aspects of their knowledge model, and they're able to take a question or take a problem and give you the best possible response. Uh, and again, the next day, it's going to be improved upon. It's going to learn a little bit more, learn a little bit more, learn a little bit more. Industry clouds don't have that capability. And they're not a, typically not an AI-centered system. By the way, they may use AI. Um, I'm not saying that. And by the way, they may use some of these uh, industry-specific LLMs on their back-end systems. I'm just talking about the generalities of the two patterns. Improved user experience. With their uh, conversational capabilities, LLMs can offer intuitive user interfaces, making technology more accessible to non-experts in the industry. Also, reduced infrastructure uh, needs. LLMs uh, could maximize the need for, uh, could minimize the need for extent, excuse me, uh, extensive infrastructure by integrating AI-driven insights directly into operations, reducing reliance on traditional cloud setups. So, in other words, we're able to run these in a number of places. And there's no reason why we couldn't work a deal out with an industry-specific LLM provider to have that LLM instance that runs either on-prem or runs on our managed service provider, runs on our colo system, or runs in a cloud instance that's going to be private to us. And I think many organizations are going to opt for that because they're going to want their own version of that LLM that they have complete control over. However, that may be a mistake because considering the fact that if you have an LLM that's able to gain advantages and knowledge by working dynamically with several uh, companies within that industry, you want to get that knowledge to work for you as well. So in other words, it's able to learn from other companies, perhaps even your competitors, to solve problems, become better at solving problems. Um, if you have a copy of that LLM, you're not going to take advantages of that because it can't see those external stimulus that'll you know, change its knowledge base. And so there's a reason why you want to leverage a centralized LLM that's communicating and working with lots of different companies because of its knowledge and, and its way of getting better, which is the, why we use AI in the first place. So notice how I didn't get into the cost of each, and I think that... Uh, you know, that's still an open-ended question. Industry-specific LLMs are pretty new to the market. We've always had the idea of having industry-specific AI knowledge bases. That's nothing new. We were talking about that in the 80s. And certainly, industry clouds are something that's been creeping into the cloud space probably for the last 10 years. And they're being utilized by some companies, but it hasn't had widespread, you know, success that I would call where it's reach an inflection point where everybody has to use it. I just haven't seen that occur. And the industry-specific LLM markets are growing up out of the generative AI explosion. That's right now. So there's enough private equity dollars and uh, investment dollars that are going into building these things, either working with companies in the industry. So they may be working with healthcare organizations or working with banks 
and trying to take their knowledge and expertise and deploy it as an LLM. But that movement's occurring and it seems to be going pretty fast. So we listed, you know, six or seven industry specific LLMs. There's probably a couple of dozen uh, that are in stealth mode right now that will come out of stealth mode in the next six months, 12 months. We'll start hearing about those. And what I'm asserting is um, that I think that the use of industry specific LLMs is going to replace the use of industry clouds. And I think the reason is obvious that it has more capabilities, it's better, has better dynamic capabilities. Uh, it's able to learn um, and it's able to provide more value back to the business. And at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Um, don't feel sorry for the people who are building and deploying industry clouds because they, in many instances, own the industry specific LLMs as well. And by the way, those things may be integrated in their industry clouds. So in other words, we're going to have an industry cloud, probably all of them. They're going to have this capability. However, the value is going to come from the LLM itself. The value is not going to come from the static code uh, that determines their business processes and foundational models and compliance and governance and all the things that industry clouds are able to do. So I think the model is going to replace it. So we're going to see lots of industry specific LLMs that you can use on demand. You have to pay a fee, you subscribe to them, they're typically going to be cloud delivered. And we'll see a lot of value being built out of uh, using this technology. And I think that's an awesome thing. So I will keep an eye on that and report back here if something changes. But you know that's my prediction right now. I think it's an easy prediction to make. And I think it's a, it's a good bet that industry-specific LLMs are gonna be the way in which we leverage industry-specific services out there. And I think that's gonna provide tremendous amount of advantages to the businesses that leverage them. The innovative businesses are able to see the value in this technology to take their industries to the next level. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other stuff at the Cube. Um, keep an eye out for events. Keep an eye out for the news articles. Uh, a lot of great coverage on AI is occurring over there on the Silicon Angle. Check that out. The reporters are doing a great job in following this space. If you want to follow me, you can check me out on LinkedIn. Check me out on X. And until next time, you guys have a safe week. Bye-bye.